Hello guys, so today was Dress Down Sunday. We were dressing youthful, trendy and modern and stylish. So we had a lot of fun in the presence of God. And today, just as it was a youthful Sunday, we've had um, our moment with our parents just to ask them their experiences while they were young and what they did for God and if they really knew God and walked with God. We hope that this video bless you wherever you are. If you are a youth, you are going to be blessed by what you're going to hear from those people that are go have gone before us, those people that are older than us. They know something that we do not know and we honor them for that. So let's get right into it. The greatest lesson you learned in your youthful days that has kept you until now. Just that. To be in the house of God and serving God. Yeah, it has helped me so much. Since I was, I was 12, I have been in serving God when I was 12. Uh, until I became adult, I got married. Now I, am, I continue serving with my children, even when they are youth. So, serving God help you to, to be grounded in his house and it has kept you many things. Yeah. Thank you so much. What is that, the greatest lesson you learned during your youth that has kept you going until now? Hello. Uh, I would say, during my youth, to be honest, I was not godly. I, I, did, I knew there is God in heaven. And I did not know how to relate with him at all. As I grew up, because I grew up with people who talk about God, and I saw how they live, but I didn't admire God there, until I met somebody who was really godly. I saw God in that person and told me things that were really, you know, that resonated with my heart, that turned my life. But then that time I wasn't a youth per se. I was, I was a mother. And so, I admired the life of that person so much that I really wanted to change my own life and change the life of my children. And that's why I have brought my children in the house of God. I, and not only just bringing them, but reading the word of God and living that word of God. Not just, you know, assume God is in heaven. I had an encounter, you know, like when, when I met the man of God that really showed me what God is all about then I started looking for God and I told God I really want to encounter you in the word if you can talk to somebody else that way I would want also you to talk to me the same way and he began talking to me that way. and it's been a process and I have seen even my children our three children I have seen them grow from where I you know I, I had never been in my youth times to marriage with children you know they can come and tell me mommy god says now yet when i was in that age i couldn't i didn't know that much what i've learned uh, the the gap between the rich and the poor will never be breached it will never be like if it depend on government to, to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor it's not, it's not going to ever happen because the gap between the rich and the poor is one thing it is confidence. That's one thing I learned. Um, and for us Christians, God has done so much for us. We are, the Bible says we are complete in Christ. But we tend to look for things outside of, of us. So um, we need to be confident. We need to be bold. Um, I have a number of friends who just by boldness someone just walks into an office and they get whatever they are going for so that's what i can say the difference between the rich and the poor is confidence so what i've realized um, is about 
who you get married to. It's important that you get married to your friend. Because when you're married to your friend, many a times that we say love fades. You know, the glamour, the glitter, the goosebumps, so comes in Aisha. But Ikisha, it doesn't mean that your marriage in Aisha. It also, the marriage continues. So if you're not married to that friend, when the lovey dovey goes, then the marriage is a question. So it's always very important as a young person, choose to marry a friend, someone that you know has the interest of your heart at all times, somebody you know that you are close to, you can talk to any time, a person that will never judge you of who you are. It's not about, it's not about what you're feeling. It's about that person and it's about you. So make sure that even when you're dating, date a friend, date a friend. Don't go for money. The time now people are going for money, maybe you feel like the age has gone. Don't look at that. Just look for a person that is a friend and marry that person. Because it's about team, it's about companionship actually. When you, you know, there are those friends that you feel you're attached to, you can only be attached to a friend or a parent in that case. Yeah. Thank you. Just tell us one thing you've learned about family as a man and say some, maybe something that's really close to your heart that you can share with the young men that are yet to get married and have children. Wow. <laughs> family. Family is um, the backbone of um, is at the backbone of our salvation. As believers, uh, God is very concerned about the family. And I know many young people have the excitement, they want to get married, because I know in the back of the mind, people think about sex. And uh, yeah, it is good, but sex is in marriage is like a spice. The real thing in marriage is usually the companionship, the friendship, the you know, standing up to each uh, <clears throat> standing up to each other, feeling comfortable, supporting each other emotionally, psychologically, being there for one another. That is all about marriage. And then also, uh, in marriage, people get kids. So standing up again, doubling up as a father, a husband, and and also as a, as a, as a, as a child of God. So the marriage institution is an entire ecosystem. It's not just something you get a lady, you prayed for, laid hands, and you go start making babies. No, it is more than that. And uh, if we become, if we as a church can really um, uphold the family values the way God intended them, we will have less street children in the, in the streets. We will have less broken children existing. Most people that are right now in, in, in police and have criminal records, when you check at their back, backgrounds, it's uh, either they were brought up by a single mother or a single dad or the parents who are missing in action. So the parenthood is also key when it comes to the family angle. So as young men, before jumping into the marriage institution, it is very, very critical that they seek more uh, mentorship on this subject. They do a research, they understand before they jump into it just because I love this lady and this lady loves me. That's just not enough because a time will come in the marriage, the love might, you know, fade away. But your commitment, the friendship, the companionship should remain. And uh, the God aspect is very key in everything. God is the, the, the institution. He's, he, he began the family, you know. So, so um, these are the things that a young man will learn when they get into marriage, that they need God to hold them together. They do not need um, private investigators to investigate who's cheating, who's not cheating. You know, they need God. Yeah. So you realize, um, even from our father, you can see the way their marriage is so solid. Good is that right at the center of it. People disagree one time or the other, but you see, when God is at the center of it, God comes in and he solves it. All right. One thing about parenting that has changed the game for you. I, th I think you'd be more mindful about um, the things you indulge in, um, how you speak, how you interact with them, how you interact with their, their, their mother as a father. You, you, 
those are some of the things that weigh heavily on your mind and also as a father as god is my father so i have to try and model that so if if because once once you become born again then god is your father so what the image and the perception that they have of me as their father they will translate that into their expectation of the expecting god to be the same as the father to them so if i was a mean father a harsh father they will translate and assume that the heavenly father is a god a mean and a harsh father so if i'm a loving father then for them it will be easier for god their father to be to be a loving father